Iron comes in with an interesting question regarding moving an SSD from one computer to another. And it is, um, he started a new build for his dad and he's getting him off the FX8370 to a 3700X and an X470. And he wants to know if he can just take his one terabyte SSD with Windows 10 from his AM3 platform and drop it into the Ryzen build without doing a fresh install of Windows 10 on the AM4 platform. I have two things to say. First, kudos for going from FX8300 to <laughs> Ryzen 7 3700X. That is a monster upgrade. That's the kind of upgrade that gives you at least double the performance and probably triple at the Windows desktop. That's the kind of upgrade that you simply open your web browser, turn your computer on and start typing and go, wow, my computer is so much faster. That's, it's that kind of upgrade. It's the, it's the, this is, if you're going to upgrade, upgrade and you are. So two thumbs up to you. And then two thumbs down to the idea of moving an SSD between platforms. Occasionally you can stay within the same platform if you want to move an SSD. If the motherboards are fairly similar and the feature set is fairly similar, Windows will adapt to changing of a network card from a Realtek to Intel, changing the sound chip a bit and a few other things. But if you're changing chipset, if you're going from AM3 to AM4, or from Intel to AMD, or from AMD to Intel, or from five-year-old Intel to modern Intel. I would not, in a million, billion, trillion years, not reinstall Windows. Having tried it, it does work sort of, occasionally, kind of, mostly, until it doesn't. Windows is great until it's garbage. Windows is a mess. It is a convoluted mess of new and old code and legacy code and Windows very, very, very badly needs a quality pass. It needs them to stop adding crap to it for like a year and then they need to do nothing but do polish. It needs a polish pass. It needs a cleanup pass. They need a a legacy code cleanup. They need a, a bug fix cleanup where they stop doing stuff to it for a while mm -hmm. and just optimize it because Windows is a mess. Some of that's Microsoft's fault. Some of that's the unlimited configurations we can put on its fault. Some of that is attempted backwards compatibility with the history of computers fault, uh, which, you know, other companies like Apple don't have a problem with. And it actually, people say, well, my Mac is perfectly reliable. Yeah, but it doesn't run... 30 years worth of software, your computer has to, you know, your PC does, so that's part of it. Correct. If you take a Windows 10 drive from AM3 to AM4, a couple of things are likely to happen. First, it may very well deactivate. Now, Microsoft is weird. Sometimes the activation comes with it, sometimes it doesn't. It depends on it depends. a lot of little things. It might be reactivatable. And of course, if it isn't, well, that's what our sponsor URCD Keys is for. You can get a Windows 10 professional OEM key for about 15 bucks. Or if you've got home on there, a Windows 10 home key for about 12 bucks. But that's not the real problem. The real problem is as Windows tries to figure out all of the chipset driver changes. Exactly. All of the um, motherboard changes all of the because it's an x470 he's going to yeah i mean because when you look white screen warning yeah. when you look at your device manager in windows that is pretty bright isn't it, it is, sorry. and you look at things like the system devices it's that stuff that all changes and yes windows will unload and reload some of it usually Will there be any conflicts between the existing... Because it doesn't uninstall the drivers. It just deactivates them and puts them aside. Is there any conflict? Maybe. Maybe not. Do you have AMD drivers on there? Is the storage controller the same? Obviously, the network adapters are going to change. 
Um, you know, the sound chips and the sound controllers are going well, to change. You got all the security stuff that'll be different too. Yeah, the chipset and everything else in there is going to change. Man, a white screen's really, I've gotten used to dark mode. I know. I was like, whoa, blasted with brightness. So let's say you put it in there and it works. And I've, I've, I've had people ask me this and I've had people say, well, I did it and it worked okay. It probably will physically work. You will be able to put it in, boot it up, and Windows will show up. People make the mistake of thinking that means that it's been successful. Random blue screens, random system pauses, slow down. Yeah. A clean install of Windows gets rid of all the crud from Windows, gets rid of old drivers you don't need. Exactly. Gives you a clean install base. And with all due respect, if this is an older person who's probably clicked on way too much crap on the internet, mm -hmm. it gives him a nice, secure, modern version of Windows that hasn't been randomly clicked on every pop-up on the internet. Um, it's a thing. It is a thing. If you were to use the machine as is with the old install of Windows, with whatever random issues you run into versus a clean install, you'd go, wow, this runs so much better. I've done it enough times over the years on enough different machines going back many, many years. It's a little better than it used to be. I remember trying to do it years ago in Windows XP and that was a freaking joke. Um, Pay the upfront price to reinstall Windows now, get a clean setup, get maximum speed, get minimum compatibility issues, put a fresh set of drivers without any legacy crap on there, or pay later through eventually having to do it when eventually he goes, why is my new computer having issues? With a modern machine and a reasonably decent internet connection, it should not take you very long to get Windows back to a good usable state. Exactly. Even if you don't do it regularly. It's just the price of a major upgrade, a clean install of Windows. Do you have anything to add to that? Uh, he just mentioned that um, he's trying to avoid his dad going, where's this and where's that? So it's like, you're just going to have to tell him things are going to look just a little different, but it's it's going to run much better. <laughs> it's hard when they're old. <laughs> so they get a little persnickety, don't they? It's like when you buy a new car. My mom actually went through this. That's probably a good analogy. Just say, Dad, it's the same car. It's just a little newer, so things are going to just be in a little bit of a different spot. Just give him a little heads up, but it's not going to be too different. A good new car analogy. It's just different enough, but the same. My mom was very upset when they changed. She has been driving the Lexus RX for 20 plus years. That's all she's driven for a long, long time, from the very first model to today. And with the recent upgrade and change, they took out her beloved CD player. You can't get a CD player no, anymore. you can't. And she's, from the, she's like, I don't want to do streaming. I don't want to do s cell phone syncing and Bluetooth thing. I just, I have my CDs and I just want to put my CD in and listen to my music. Well, that's old, mom. They don't do CDs anymore. And they changed the screen. The screen has changed. You still have a screen. You but still have a screen. But it's different. <laughs> but I will say this. Putting Windows 10 on a new Ryzen system versus his old installation on an FX system is not nearly as much change as a new car is. Yeah. They really change the cars. They do. Sometimes you get in the new car and you're like... Yeah. I, I understand the feeling because it's kind of like, yeah, I was perfectly happy with my old car. But, you know, I wonder if there is... I wonder if there is a market or a, or a place in the car industry for making a model of a car that just doesn't change much. I don't know. There just might not be enough buyers who are willing to buy it. I don't know. In any case, reinstall Windows. It's better.